Hey everybody, welcome back to you To Be Like Christ. We are doing a five minute Bible study through Deuteronomy chapter six today. I'm definitely gonna make it five minutes because it's 106 degrees where I live and uh, I have to turn the air conditioner off to so it doesn't mess with the audio on the microphone. Otherwise there's like this background hum. So I'm gonna be fast. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter six, you can download this PDF for free on our website at tobelikechrist.com. There's a link down in the description. When did the events of Deuteronomy chapter six happen? Same as the first five chapters. We're about 1450 BC. This is at the end of the Israelites, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, right before they're about to enter the land of Canaan. Moses is talking to the people of Israel one last time before he dies. And that leads us into our character section. We've got the Israelites, who are the, descend the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They've grown into a really large nation, and they're about to inherit or conquer the land of Canaan, which was promised to their forefathers. You remember all the way back in Genesis. Abraham received a promise from God that his descendants would live in the land of Canaan. Now God is going to fulfill that. Moses is our second main character. We've been talking about him through Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers now. He's the leader of the Israelites, and he's going to pass on his authority to a guy named Joshua, and Joshua is actually going to be the guy who takes the, Canaanite, or the, uh, the Israelites into the promised land. Something else that hasn't changed is our map. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Moses spoke the words recorded in Deuteronomy while in Moab, uh, probably on the plains of Moab near Mount Pisgah. And you can see Pisgah and Moab on the map in the top right corner. Okay, so jumping over to page number two in our outline section, I've broken this chapter down into two sections. The first section, verses 1 through 19, I've titled God's Covenant with Israel. So Moses, again, similar to what he did in the last chapter, he again reminded the Israelites of God's covenant with them. If they would obey God's commands, he would bless them, he would allow them to live in Canaan, and he would multiply them and make them a great nation. Moses insisted that the Israelites not only internalize these laws in the current generation, but also teach them to their children so they wouldn't be forgotten as the generations went on, because if they were forgotten, God's blessing would be lost. The people were told to love God with all of their heart, all of their soul, and all of their might. And the covenant with God was supposed to be internalized in all of the Israelites as if it was written on their hearts or it was always before their eyes. They were supposed to be thinking about this all the time, who they were, the identity that God had given them, and they were to keep God's laws to keep this covenant. Moses warned the people not to forget God when they found homes in Canaan and began living there and were blessed there. You know, it's easy to forget God when, when things are comfortable and when life is easy. When they finally reached the land of Canaan, God told them that they were not to worship the false gods of other nations. In fact, they were instructed to expel all of the current inhabitants of Canaan from the land before they made their homes there, because this would pres uh, well because if they allowed those nations to remain, there would be a temptation for those pagan nations to entice the Israelites into idolatry, and Moses didn't want that. In the final section, verses 20 through 25, we return to this idea of teaching the next generation of Israelites about the law. So when the Israelite children came to their parents in, in the land of Canaan and they asked them, why, Father, do you insist on keeping the testimonies and the statutes and the rules of God? Moses here gives the parents an answer for how they're supposed to, how they're supposed to respond to an inquiry like that from their children. They were to recount the story of the Exodus to their children and to tell them how God had saved them from slavery and kept his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them the land of Canaan as a home. And so they were to teach their children the history of Israel and how God had been faithful to them all of that time. And it was for those reasons that they kept God's laws, that they worshiped God as the one true God and obeyed him. And so that is Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now for our application. This chapter can seem somewhat repetitive of the first five chapters. Some of the same themes are repeated here. But the reason is because Moses really wanted to re-emphasize these principles to the Israelites. And we find out why as we go through the rest of the Old Testament story and the history of Israel. 
The children of Israel were constantly forgetting these very things that Moses has repeated again and again. They were constantly forgetting God when their lives became good and easy and comfortable. Just read the story of the judges. They repeatedly neglected to teach their children about the covenant that they had with God, and therefore their children broke covenant with God. And they were constantly getting mixed up in idolatry and the immoralities that accompanied it. So as you read through the Old Testament and the New Testament, take note of the commands and the warnings that perhaps seem repetitive or that are at least repeated several times. God probably repeated them in the text because they guide us away from common sins that are repeated generation after generation. God didn't just repeat things to bore us when reading the Bible. So these things would get ground into our minds. We would internalize them and we wouldn't make the same mistakes that people have been making forever.